What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're going to talk about a specific bait that has helped me produce a lot more fish over the last five to 10 years. The reason I want to talk about this specific bait uh, for bass, pike, and perch um, has to do with the amount of anglers that I see around the lakes in PA that are still throwing a simple worm on a hook with a bobber like that. Now, when I started throwing these baits, they started producing a lot more fish for me and a lot bigger fish. So the bait that we're gonna talk about today is the good old fashioned spinner bait. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, so we're gonna cover a ton of information that will help you guys continue to use baits like these or to start using baits like these in order to catch more fish here in the state of PA. All right, some of you are wondering why I'm doing an episode on spinner baits when they've been around since 1951. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are way too many anglers not utilizing these baits in order to catch more fish and the quality of fish that we've caught in the past five to 10 years. All right, so let's define what a spinner bait is. So what the heck is a spinner bait? A spinner bait is essentially a lure or a family of lures that have blades built into them that allow these blades to spin in the water when this lure is in motion. Now we have a couple different types of lures within this family. We have inline spinner baits and we have safety pin spinner baits. So hopefully you can see that. Now some of you, obviously a lot of you know what a bucktail is and a lot of you probably know what this is. However, for those of you that do not know, the whole point to these is two things, vibration and flash. The more vibration and the more flash you have, the more fish you're going to attract. So back to the bobber, you have a worm on a hook sitting on a bobber floating in the water. Maybe a fish swims by it, maybe you catch a five pound fish on that. But whenever I'm ripping these in the water, this attracts the fish more, and this gives me a higher percentage to catch those bigger fish that those bobbers will not. So again, the inline spinner baits and the safety pin spinner baits will catch you bass, they'll catch you pike, and they'll catch you perch, and I have a picture to prove it. Okay guys. Let's break a spinnerbait down. Let's, let's look at the anatomy of this spinnerbait. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna slide forward, I'm gonna show you this. So the anatomy of a spinnerbait is this. You have blades, you have swivels or clevises, you have decorative beads, you have the actual safety pin itself, which is just a wire you know, rod that comes around. You have the R bend, typically in the middle, kind of looks like an R. That's where your line gets tied to when you're pulling these things in the water. Then you also have your lead head. There are multiple variations of this. Do some research on that. We're not going to spend too much time on it. You also have your skirt and you have a hook. Now, if you guys can see here, I actually have a second hook on this, which is considered a trailer hook. We're gonna talk about this later. This is critically important. So now that you understand the anatomy, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other features that this will give you. Okay, I wanna take a minute to talk about blades. It's super important because different blades will do different things for you in different situations. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the Colorado blade and hopefully you guys can see that. A Colorado blade is typically rounded and much larger than other blades. The Colorado blade offers you a much slower spin, but also provides a much louder thump or vibration in the water. That's super important because when the water is murky or dirty, the Colorado blade is preferred because it's gonna give you that additional vibration you need. Also, 
When it's cold outside, they tell you to slow the retrieve down. The Colorado blade is the slowest moving blade because it's producing more thump. Also at night, when the fish can't see this as well, the Colorado blade with its vibration will give you that extra thump that you need in order to hook those fish in those situations. Okay, next one up is the willow leaf blade, or blades in this case. Now a willow leaf is typically smaller, they're more slimline, you guys can see that. They spin a lot faster, and these are all about speed and flash. Now, I typically bust these baits out in the summertime when the water and the weather is warmer. The bass and the other fish that you're going to be after, they're going to be more inclined to chase this because it's moving a lot faster when that water is warmer. Also, these are really good for structure, fishing in and around structure because they don't get hung up as much. So I use willow leaf blades mostly when the water is warm in the summertime and I burn the crap out of them in order to pull those fish out of cover or just get a reaction bite based off of speed and flash. Okay, last blade type. I want to talk about the Indiana blade. Now this blade is a hybrid between the Colorado and the Willow. So it's actually built for speed and vibration, which is kind of interesting because I don't throw this a lot. Now this is a great bait to throw all year round and these blades will work in the spring and in the summer whenever you need to go slow or fast because they give you that in-between blade size in order to do what you need to do with it. A lot of times guys will ask me, you know, what color blades should you throw? And really it's your preference. My preference is typically I'll throw silver blades when it's cloudy and gold blades when it's sunny. I'll throw silver blades when the water is clear in gold blades whenever the water is murky. There are also other times where I don't really care about the color of blade because I'm throwing for vibration. So really, get out there and try it yourself. Find what works for you because there technically is no right or wrong answer. Okay, I wanna talk about the next feature of the spinnerbait and that's the skirt. There are multiple varieties of skirts out there. Some of them are silicone, some of them are rubber, some of them are hair. You know, this would be a good example of a hair. Uh, essentially, I use silicone, and there are two reasons for that. Number one, you get a lot more colors, variety of colors. Number two, hopefully you guys can see this, there are metal flakes in that skirt. This helps with flash. So, uh, the color of skirts are important, but the nice thing is that you guys can mix and match. You can take these off and you can adjust them. You can move them around to different baits and really create your own color scheme. And that's, that's beneficial for different situations. Also though, I wanna talk about the skirt length because this is also important to me. I typically, uh, a lot of guys, let me say this, a lot of guys will just use something like this that's enough skirt to cover the hook. However, I like to use trailer hooks. So I have actually two hooks on there. And as you can see, this skirt is just a little bit longer than this skirt. The nice thing about that is that the longer skirt will cover multiple hooks, but it also changes the action of the bait as well. So make sure you guys are paying attention, not only just the color, but the length of that skirt on the bait, because it does make a difference. Okay, next topic is spinnerbait color. There are a billion colors out there. With that, you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly. However, keep life simple. Three rules of thumb to live by when it comes to spinnerbaiting. Number one, for dirty or dark water, always throw brighter colors like your chartreuses and your oranges. Number two, for clear water, throw natural colors like that shad pattern or this bluegill pattern. And number three, whenever you're fishing at night, always, always, always throw dark colors like this dark purple or black.
A lot of times people will ask me, does size really matter? I can tell you, size always matters. Bigger baits catch bigger fish. Smaller baits catch more fish. So whenever I go out with my spinner baits, I'm always looking to throw a half ounce to three quarters ounce for that five to six to seven pound largemouth. If I have a day where I wanna catch more fish, I'll throttle back down to a quarter ounce and throw that all day long. Is it really important to throw a trailer hook on your spinner bait? The answer is absolutely yes it is. The reason for that is that little simple hook right there increases your hookup ratio by 50%. So why wouldn't you increase your hookup ratio by 50% just by throwing an extra trailer hook on your spinnerbait? I have a tendency to like the uh, Gamagatsu, if you guys can see that. Or I'll go with the KVD. By the way, Kevin Van Dam, thank you for your trailer hook. It's caught me a lot of fish over the years. Um, they sell little plastic tubing that will actually keep that trailer hook on for you or you guys can go to the store and buy one of those rubber bands for 99 cents, cut that up and put that bad boy on there. Some guys will use like little pieces of plastic, that's fine too. Bottom line is, check out the trailer hooks. If it increases your hookup ratio, why wouldn't you do it? Okay, one of the last things I wanna talk about here is the retrieve. How do we actually use these things to catch fish? Well, there's three methods that I use. First method, tossing it out there and ripping it back. I'm constantly changing the cadence though. Sometimes I'll let these sink a little deeper. Sometimes I'll rip them right back as soon as they hit the top of the water. Um, bottom line is when you're ripping this, most of the time you're gonna be able to see it. So it's gonna be right under the surface. That's the first way. The second way is slow rolling it. A lot of times I'll get out on, the, uh, on a boat or on, on our kayak and I'll just, throw these out and I'll just kind of work them, ripping them and pausing them, letting them drop and hit them, hitting off the bottom. So when you're slow rolling, a lot of times this is gonna make contact with the bottom and that's kind of what you want. You want it to knock off of any type of logs or rocks or debris in the water um, in order to change direction. Lastly, a lot of times I'll take these and I'll just do like a simple drop shot or I'll vertical jig these. Um, I actually went bass fishing on the first day of trout a few years back and I just decided just to sit there and vertical jig my spinner baits just for fun. You know, I caught probably about a half dozen bass in, the, in that first couple of hours just messing around, but it goes to show you that these can simply just be dropped and this skirt will flutter and the blades will spin downwards and a lot of times the fish when you're either falling or when you're ripping back up will just grab a hold of them and try to eat them. So those are the three methods that I use. Um, a lot of times I'll merge all three methods into one retrieve. Um, if I'm fishing from shore maybe I'll throw it out, I'll rip it for you know a few seconds and I'll stop, let it fall, let it hit off the bottom. Maybe I'll jig it. You know, Maybe I'll go from a rip to a pause to a jig. Bottom line is, you guys got to get out there and use these to develop, you know, develop your cadence, develop your skill with them. There's a couple different ways you can use these, all of which will catch you more fish. All right, guys, I just wanted to leave you with my top three or four spinner baits that I've used here in the state of Pennsylvania that I think would be beneficial for you guys to check out. Um, first one I wanna show you is Slambo Lures. If you guys get a chance, he's at a new Ken, really awesome kid, I've talked to him a bunch of times at the shows. Um, I took a lot of his spinner baits up to uh, Canada. I fished a lot of them in Pennsylvania, they look like this. He also has uh, several different types that have crab claw uh, blades on them. Uh, they're pretty awesome. I think the colors are good. You guys should check out Slambo. Um, number three, Booyah Pikey. The Booyah Pikey is probably one of my favorite uh, lures overall because they just, they're really sturdy. 
Um, they're solid lures, they have good colors, and they're great baits, and they're accessible everywhere. So check out the Booyahs, in particular the Booyah Pikeys. Number two, Terminators. The standard Rapala Terminators. And I want to show you guys um, a couple of these Terminators that I've had, just so you can get a feel for what they look like after I'm done using them. Okay, so here's a, uh, here's a snapshot of a Terminator that's pretty beat up. You can tell the paint job is messed up, and you can also um, tell that the skirt is just absolutely destroyed. Um, these Terminators, they get crushed. They're expensive baits, but they are absolutely worth it. Whenever you see baits that look like that, and I know I have another one sitting here, and that look like that, hopefully you can see that, they are worth putting in your tackle box. They are killer, killer baits. So check out the, the Terminators. Um, they're going to be really good to you. And their skirts are awesome as well. My number one favorite all-time spinner bait. He's out of Pittsburgh. Uh, again, these are super unique. Um, they're called Death Shimmers. So I didn't get the chance to see him at the Allegheny Outdoor Show this year. Um, however... I bought enough of these a while back to have them. Um, I've taken them to Canada. I fished them all through Ohio and Pennsylvania, and I've caught a ton of largemouth on these things um, and all the local lakes out by me. In case you guys can't see that, I actually live in the Laurel Highlands. So a lot of the lakes out my way, Greensburg, Irwin, um, Lake Trobe, uh, Mount Pleasant, those types of areas, those are the lakes I'm fishing. So I go over to Twin Lakes and I throw this, and that's what it looks like when I'm done using it. So if you guys can see that, the paint on that thing is starting to chip. Look at the blade, look at the, uh, not only the blades, but look at the uh, actual bait itself. A lot of the safety pin uh, spinner baits are straight. The death shimmers, however, are crooked like that. And they're like that for a reason. This increases your vibration in addition to the blades by a hundred percent these are absolutely killer spinner baits you guys have to look at these go out on their website hopefully he's still selling these because the death shimmers they were a game changer in canada and they are a game changer in the state of pennsylvania when you're looking for big largemouth bass Okay, with all of that said, I wanted to make sure I gave you guys a bunch of information on spinner baits. Again, the reason for that is I just don't see enough guys using these baits. Ten years ago, I was at Twin Lakes throwing a bobber and a worm, and I looked over at about a seven-year-old kid that was standing beside me by himself. His dad had dropped him off to do some fishing. I watched this kid in a matter of an hour catch at least a dozen largemouth out of the weed bed that was right in front of us. I immediately thought to myself, why am I not using spinner baits? The next weekend I went out, I tied one of these on, and I started catching three, four pound fish. I got my first five and six pounder and multiple five and six pounders after that on baits like these. It's worth you guys taking a look at them. They've been around for over 50, 60 years. For some reason, not a lot of guys are throwing these anymore. Maybe they're just, you know, outdated or maybe just people are just throwing, you know, swim baits. Whatever the reason is. I wanted to make sure that I did a solid episode on this because I am a spinnerbait bass fisherman. I have been for a long time and these are kind of close to home for me because I've caught a lot of fish. So again, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Check these spinnerbaits out. If you guys like what you're seeing, please be sure to like the video or subscribe to my channel. Again, I just want to thank everybody for your time. Fishing season's almost here. Just picked up my license today. Looking forward to doing some more of these. Hope you guys get out soon. Thanks.